Hey, happy Friday. Happy Friday, everybody. Time to wind down. Cheers. Time to wind down. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Now, Cheers. that looks like wine. This is wine. Awesome. Yeah, it's a giant glass of wine. I am so proud of you. <laughs> yeah, this don't hire Tony if you need um, like Alcoholics Anonymous coaching because she's proud of me for drinking wine. <laughs> Are you implying something? <laughs> yes, that you're 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 encouraging me to drink earlier and earlier. Although it's it is noon here, somewhere it's it's five it's, o'clock somewhere. That's right. It's it's noon here, so it's totally legit. And welcome everyone. I hope everyone's had a great week. Isn't it weird that on Fridays when you look back, you go, "What happened to the week? Like, what did I did I do anything significant this week?" Um, oh, it seems like the weeks have just been flying by. They absolutely um, have. I, I know for me this week, I mean, I, I, I do a fair amount of coaching, but I usually have it all spread out. And this right. week was an entire week of pretty much coaching. I think the only time I wasn't coaching was when I was on the phone with you and, right. and Lindsay, our, our community manager. And, um, Boy, it's been, it's funny when it all is together yeah. uh, and having to be on. Right. And, you know, you're, you're, I don't know about anybody else, but I'm, there are times in the, each session I'm going, did I already, did I already <laughs> say that? Or well, and, 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 and this a, it'll be true confessions. New ideas for everyone. Yeah. Right? And yeah. it's been a very exciting week and we have in, in, with everybody, we've come up with some great new ideas, but boy, it's kind of like, oh, I don't know. Well, myself it's been one of those busy weeks where i went two and a half days without showering i'm just gonna just throw it out there i haven't even drank a lot of wine and i'm already making true confessions tmi um, tmi yeah when it's a busy week um <laughs> hi carol carol you may have come in right as we started that but we always laugh because i said i need a planner i need a, a calendar maybe just in my google calendar i need every other day it to pop up to say um yeah. shower yeah. Um, get dressed today. Yeah. Um, you know, when you're so busy and you're just running from the time you get up to the time you, you know, pass out. It, it and gets of course, a the fun. beauty of so much of this online stuff is we really only need to be clean and presentable from about <laughs> this far up. <laughs> anybody watching right now, you have no idea what the bomb have in my body. No. And and that is very true. And some days I'm even bold enough. I'll put on my hat that just says bad hair day. And well, I'll you even, had it on in our meeting yesterday. I had it on yesterday. That was my, that was my two. I will say after our call, I did go shower. Oh, did you? <laughs> I was wondering what that was. But. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's been one of those weeks and I think, um, so, and I guess I should throw that out for any of you who are entrepreneurs who work from home. Do you shower every day? I'm just curious. Am I the only one? Um, oh, see, it's a kind of a sad life. I'm drinking early and I'm not showering every day. Is this on? Am I on a, a downward spiral here? Well, you're, um, you're drinking early, you're not showering, and most of the time you're not even getting dressed. And I believe that those are three symptoms of something. Bizarre. <laughs> and I stay inside. So I think if anybody is on the outside, send help. Yeah. Um, hello, Bob. How are you? I bet Bob showers every day. Every day. I can, smell, I, Bob. I can smell the, the clean, fresh smell and cologne from here. Yeah. Um, well, and to this this week I had an interesting experience that brought up the topic of testimonials and review sites. And we're going to look at it from all angles because as a um, an entrepreneur, we, we want more testimonials. Right. As a consumer, we have the power now to go on review sites and post reviews. So as a business, how are we managing those reviews as well? Right. Um, and Carol, thank you. Carol says, I find it inspiring and you look fabulous. Don't worry. See, from the waist up and the right lighting, Carol, magic happens. Um, yeah. See, lighting is another trick. And then you put on glass. Oh, there's so many tricks. Um, but what happened was, there is a site, and, and I'm curious how many of you out there have been on or used the social site called Nextdoor. Nextdoor is a, and it's interesting because Facebook is launching a very localized part of Facebook, but Nextdoor is 
a neighborhood social media, and there's over 165,000 neighborhoods signed up in the United States. And each neighborhood has over 120,000 people in each neighborhood. So there's millions of people just in the US. I know this uh, last week, I think it was, or two weeks ago, they launched in France. So they're rolling this out to other countries. I don't know what other countries um, have it already, but but it's very, it's just a local Facebook. So I go on there and I can say, hey, I'm looking for um, a landscaper, or does anyone know a great massage therapist or um, review sites for people are always asking about uh, hairstylists and uh, places on there. And if you get great service somewhere, you want to promote them in next door because then all your neighbors. Yeah. So it, it's that type of site. Well, last week in next door, one of our neighbors, and I say neighbors as if they live right next door to me, but they, they live in the neighborhood because you do sign up for your neighborhood by zip codes. And one of the neighbors posted a really bad experience she had with a local moving company who changed their pricing. They were trying to charge her more when they showed up. And it, in hearing her story, part of it could be um, her fault. You know, she was at fault. But she said what the company did was she said she posted on their Facebook page that her complaint and the company first deleted her post and then told her to go and die and no yes oh my gosh then they were cussing her out well luckily she just did a quick screenshot of it on there and then she came and posted her screenshots in next door well the neighbors it was as if someone was attacking our neighborhood with pitchforks because the neighbors grabbed their weapons and everybody went over to that facebook page what was interesting and this is what I know about Facebook. If a page, a business page, hey, Barb, hey, Helene, um, good to see you guys. If a Facebook page allows reviews, so if they have a tab for reviews, um, you cannot remove a review. A, a business cannot delete or change a review. Right. Um, but if they don't have the review tab there and you post something on their page, well, it's easy. They just remove it. Um so that's one thing. So I told this neighbor, um, I said, you'll want to go and post this on their Google page because they can't remove it there or Yelp. They can't remove it there either. Right. Um, and so just as a consumer knowing where do you post reviews and, you know, and then there's the, everybody talks to us about anyway, because we manage a lot of Yelp uh, review pages for companies, local right. businesses. And, and what I know is everybody complains. I hate Yelp. They're fake reviews, blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of things that you need to know about how Yelp reviews work. And, you know, the key is as a consumer, I, I go to Yelp and I read the reviews if I'm looking for a restaurant. Right. So it got me thinking of, you know, how do you deal with as a business when you do get a bad review or a bad Usually we don't get a bad testimonial because no one's going to put on our LinkedIn profile a bad recommendation or testimonial. Right. Um, although there are some that you you wish people would. Um, but, you know, what do we do about that and how do we manage our reputation online? Right. And, you know, and I'm curious, you've talked about before, how do you turn things around? Yes. Um, you know, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I, we have one of our numinisms, which is turn the disadvantage into an advantage. And uh, that, that can refer to, to many disadvantages, but often it's if you've gotten some bad press or a bad review, what do you do? And essentially, we have a lot of clients who use our 5S solution and use the unexpected, you know, design an unexpected encounter specifically to address bad press. And you've got to realize that it's not just bad press. It could be something that happens. I know there is the, the story in Iceland of the volcano. I think it was in 2008 or 2009, and there was a volcano, and nobody wanted to go to Iceland anymore. And so Iceland invested, uh, Tourism Iceland invested a ton of money into creating a series of unexpected encounters. There were online campaigns and videos to kind of counter the perception that you shouldn't go to Iceland. Mm, and so I think I think... There's there's a there's so much in what you just said, which is that sometimes we just get bad reviews and all you can really do is ignore them. And sometimes there's bad press that is justified. It sounds like this moving company was 
justified. And in that case, the first thing for that company to do is to truly fix yeah. the problem. What they did is unacceptable behavior. But I think that the situation that can happen more often than not is that what do we do when we get bad press or bad reviews that really isn't deserved? So it's not up to us or it's something that was completely out of our control. And how do you do that? Well, the thing to do is then to think about how you create an experience. I love the example of the um, uh, the restaurant that put a sign in front of a table that was in a corner and it said, worst table of the house, $10 off. So, uh, you know, it's all about how do you take that press and be more innovative, think innovatively about situations that may or may not be out of your control and kind of flip the script. Right, right. And I do think, you know, when it is your, when you're at fault, shout out to all you guys saying hi and hello and happy Friday. Um, when it is something you do wrong, how you handle it in public says a lot. Absolutely. And I, you know, I always say definitely you want to be you know, number one, paying attention to all of your social sites and your review sites to manage them. There are so many businesses who don't even go and claim their business on these social sites, or you may have a Facebook page and don't even realize that there's multiple Facebook pages of yours that were created for a location. Somebody checks in and we just had a client this week and they have a business page that we manage. And all of a sudden we found three more Facebook pages. They're place pages. So somebody, and their business is not even a physical business, but somebody just goes and checks in on Facebook and puts an address and then they post things on there. Well, you need to be watching for and set Google alerts and social media alerts to search for those so that you can manage them. And when there's a negative thing, how you handle it in public. And we have had so many situations where I tell clients, do not delete the post. You can't delete tweets. You can't, once you tweet, you can't delete because someone has already taken a screenshot and someone's going to take that screenshot and then share it. And so, um, you know, manage it in, in public. Now there are times somebody posts something and you can hide the post without deleting it. You can hide it. So the person who posted it, they still see it there. They still think it's there, but no one else will see it. They see it and their friends will see it, but no one else will see it. And then you can uh, try to get them into a private message to re- resolve it. But um, then, yeah, if, if you're getting co- you know, if you're getting complaints on things, Um, you know, turn it into something that you can like the table. I think that's a great one. Or I've seen the one that somebody posted a negative Yelp review about a hamburger place and they posted a sign outside saying the absolute worst hamburger in the world happens to be served here. You know, you can make fun, which is funny because I wanted to share, um, you know, sometimes we try to use our personality in creative ways, especially on social media. And, if you're managing your social media or someone else's, you have to make sure you know what the boundaries are because sometimes someone might think if they're being cute or fun, sarcastic, and it can cross the line. And all of a sudden you're dealing with a crisis in that. And one of them I think is hysterical to follow on Twitter. Their Facebook page is just as funny, but it's pop tarts. Um, and I was going, let me share, I'm going to show you their screen because it is so funny, but I can see where it kind of can cross the line. Um, so let me bring them into, let's see, I'm going to take us out. Uh, okay, let me know if you're seeing the Pop-Tart feed. Um, okay, let me see. I'm going to take us, minimize us here. And there we go. I think that that does it. Okay. Okay. Um, Okay, so here's here's the Pop Tarts Twitter feed, and one of them I just thought was hilarious is this. But again, people are being silly with Pop Tarts. They're saying, you know, my girlfriend told me Pop Tarts are disgusting. She wants me to stop spending money on them. Any advice? And Pop Tarts just writes, "Dump her." Um, and then someone else says, "What's it going to take to get a lifetime supply of Pop Tarts?" Pop Tarts says, "A steady paycheck." You know, they're all really funny uh, responses. Some of them do get a little edgy where they'll say, um, I wish I could delete your account right now, or um, you need to, uh, they've said a few things that I think are, wow, that could cross the line. And um, so I, I thought it was just an interesting thing for us to be aware of. 
when we have somebody managing or sometimes, you know, we're drinking wine and we're online, never a good combo. <laughs> um, never a good combo on that one is uh, make sure that you are, um, you know what the boundaries are and you make sure they're clear. But yeah, if you want to be entertained, check out Pop-Tarts. Um, they're... Well, yeah, and I think I think the point that that is is um, implicit in what you're saying is that if you if you have that kind of voice online and and you own it and that's fine, you could be prepared for you need to be prepared that somebody could take offense. Right. And if they take offense, they're going to take a screenshot of that. Exactly. And they're going to post it out of context, and then you've got you know you've got negative Crisis. to deal with. Yeah. Having said that. I, I think the flip side is that we're so busy trying to be everything to everybody and never crossing a line and doing those things that we all become oh, you know, vanilla ice cream. No offense to anybody who loves vanilla ice cream, but um, at some point, if we don't take a stand, you know, brave brands take a stand. And, and when you do that, you're going, you're going to make enemies. You're going to have people, but that don't like what you said. But I think right. your point is when you're engaging with people on social media, you have to be prepared to take the fallout from whatever voice or whatever attitude you choose to have. Yeah. Yeah. And so sometimes we might think that we're being, we're standing out or being different, which, which in my opinion, Pop-Tarts does a great job. I just kind of in my mind going, at what point did Pop-Tarts decide snarky was going to be their brand voice? Because I think it's kind of interesting that they made that decision for, uh, for a snack food like that, but I think it's hysterical. Like I love every post. I go, man, I wish I could, you know, say stuff like that on. Yeah, on but here's account. the point, Gina. Do you eat pop tarts? Um, I would if I had them in the house. Yeah, I wouldn't. They're not. <laughs> I, I don't think you and I are their target market, and so no. I think their target market is probably teens and young adults who are eating pop tarts yeah. for dinner because uh, you know they don't want to make. Uh, <laughs> They're on the mind point. I, you know, I'm making huge judgment calls here, but I think their target market is a lot younger than we are. And right. maybe snarky and that kind of what we would refer to as snarky and somebody younger might right. refer to you as a good sense of humor. Um, you know, maybe that's maybe that's the voice that resonates with uh, with their target market. And to be honest, I can't imagine that a popular brand like Pop-Tarts uh, did this by accident. Oh, With yes. You can tell when you read it, it is not by accident. It's very it's intentional. Very it is crafted. All their videos are the same. So, uh, but I thought that was interesting that you, you might think something is being snarky. And if it's not on brand, and we've talked about that, it could cross the line and be, be offensive. I think one thing I wanted to look at is what are creative ways? Because if you have a negative review somewhere, or if you Google your name, which I always recommend people do. I used to do this a lot with my daughters when they were um, in high school. I would always Google their names with them. And we'd say, what shows up when you Google your name? And then click on images because sometimes people will tag you in images right. that are unflattering or that you're what you didn't know about. Um, or they're coming up with you as a tag on them and you're not even in the picture. So managing your brand. And we used to talk about that with the girls when they were in high yeah, school. Yeah. Oh, super important when they're in high school, because again, managing our personal brand is always important. And then how do you, what do you do about it? And we've, I had a guy that I was working with and he was a leader at a big company, a big beverage company. And he, when you Googled his name, a very negative article came up and it was always at the top, but he, we talked about, he didn't blog. He didn't put out any other content. So it was an old article from a couple years ago at another place he worked and he wanted to know how to delete it. And I said, unfortunately, you can't delete it. But kind of like you said, how do you flip it? You need to get positive reviews, positive testimonials, positive articles, things that you put out to push it down. To push it down the list. Push it down the list. And, you know, when you're when you're putting out lots of content all the time, you're when somebody Googles your name your good stuff should come up at the top and yeah. you, you struggle with the fact that you have a name that's similar. Well, not similar, identical well, same. Identical. <laughs> to, a, to a, a very colorful person who's yeah. very flamboyant and had a lot of content still yeah. does, yes. but now you're coming up. But, but I think that's something we have to look at is if we have a common name, 
what do you do about that? You know, you've right. got to get really creative right. To, right. Uh, to put that. But I was curious, like, do you get, I mean, on LinkedIn, we get recommendations on LinkedIn, but I don't know that many people actively ask for recommendations. And, and, you know, we always recommend when you're working with someone on a project or something, send a request for a recommendation at the end of that project. Um, they don't have to fill one out. I'm curious in the audience, have you asked for recommendations from people? But I think um, it's also, there's lots of places you might want a recommendation and you can't ask them to put them in a bunch of different spots. So I know for us, right. although LinkedIn is one of our primary um, social channels, we would prefer to get a testimonial we could put on the website. Right. So, you know, we're, well, could you not take it from LinkedIn and then copy and put that on? Because that would give you it two places. Yeah, I guess I would, I would, um, I, we always ask for a testimonial and say that will be used on our website. I suppose we could, the other thing with a recommendation in LinkedIn, and I, and I think they're great, is that the person has to go in and do it. Yeah, I and, know. And, you know, that, that is sometimes a tougher sell because they have to find the time, not only do they have to think of what to say, uh, they have to find the time to go in and do it. And, and, we are a big believer in testimonials. And so we try to make it as easy as possible. We'll, we'll put a draft together. Um, and this goes back to something that anybody who's worked with me, and I know Carol, who we're working together today, um, knows that it's all about the words you want to put in your customers' mouths. What do you want them to say? So if you have a conversation, for example, at the end of a project, I, I am not a believer in leaving it up to them what they're going to say. Right. I think it's very important to have a conversation, um, ask them for some feedback. And when they say what they say that it is you want to hear, um, then our job is usually to say, would you mind if we put that in a testimonial for you? And then Jared will pull it together. We send it to them. They sign it nine times out of 10. They just put their name to it. They might add a few tweaks, but I'm constantly listening in those debriefs for the words that I want associated with my brand. So if I'm yeah. having one of my one of my words or phrases that I want associated with my brand is how prepared I am. Anything around how much research I've done or, gee, we felt like you worked for the company or any of those words that come out in a debrief conversation after the end of a project, I'm on those like Flint going, would you mind if we put a testimonial together for you that covers off A, B, and C? And if they've actually said it, then you put it, they took take it back, they sign it or whatever you do in our e-world today and we can post it on uh, on the site. But this way we're getting the testimonials we want that support the brand story that we want to tell as right. opposed to just saying we'd love, we'd love a recommendation or we'd love a testimonial because then a lot of those are, this takes us back to vanilla ice cream. A lot of them are just. She was great. Yeah. She was great. Which um, was great. Which is great. Yeah, which is great. And right. it's interesting because I've seen some people do really creative things where they interview a client. Yes. And this this kind of came in my mind too when um, in the area of podcasts where you can be interviewing a client to highlight something about their business or how they do something. But then if they then mention, uh, you know, that you'd have to be creative. But I've seen people actually do a video interview with a client who's given a testimonial basically of the work that they're doing together because mm -hmm. they're talking about those projects and that, that work. And right. then they ask after, you know, could I post this on yes. our website as well? I yes. also saw someone that did an infographic, which I thought was super creative. The infographic had data about that business. So it, you know, it was just, you know, X, not X percentage of people. Um, I can't remember what their business was, but it was a, a consulting company. And then next to the data point, they actually had, a little bubble that had a testimonial about that. So the testimonial tied into the yeah, infographic. Uh, wow. Yeah. And I thought that's a great use of it too, because you can put an infographic on your website. You can use it in social media. Um, I see a lot of people now asking people to tag them in an Instagram picture. So they'll say, yeah. if you like listening to my podcast, I, I would love it if you would take a screenshot, just take a, either a screenshot of the podcast on your phone or take a screenshot of a picture of you listening to my podcast and tag me on Instagram and whether they give something away or they mention you in their next podcast. I thought that was creative as well. And I'm seeing a lot of people do that one. 
um, you know, it's, it's, I'm curious what other creative things have you seen or um, have you used in getting testimonials for your business? Because I think going back to the next door, word of mouth is still the best. You know, we want to hear it from somebody else. Your website can tell me everything you do, but it's not as powerful as hearing it from someone else. Right. And I think, uh, you know, all of this con conversation about testimonials is also equally as relevant for referrals because in fact, referrals are more valuable than testimonials as far as I'm concerned. Right. And so, you know, again, as you point out, word of mouth is so important. So as opposed to saying to a client, um, do you have a referral? You know, do you have anybody, do you know anybody who you think in our case, you know, anybody who you think um, um, could get value from our message and from our process uh, instead of having that, when that person says, which most of the time they do, they think about it and they go, yes. Then the next step is ask them to write the introduction email. Because once right. that happens, then, of course, you have word of mouth as opposed right. to what we might have been taught in the past, which was to open an email or a conversation with saying so and so suggested I I get in touch. Well, so right. Yes, that I get in touch is very different than so and so reaching out to that person and creating that first email introduction. So that is right. very much a part of our go to strategy is asking if they do say yes. I do know people that I think could, could benefit from your message and from your process. We ask them just to do that, that email, that introduction email to get the conversation started. And it's worth yeah. both. Yeah, it is. I, I, again, I think we need to do a better job, all of us. Uh, and you kind of forget until you're either redoing a website or you, you have a proposal that's asking for recommendations or testimonials and you're like, Oh, I got to get like my, my recommendations updated. Um, yes. You know, it's, it's getting in that mindset of, after projects, when we are working with someone, when someone compliments you, um, you know, ask for those recommendations and testimonies. And I love what you said is, where do you want them? Um, yeah. How do you want them sent to you? Um, you know, we've we've done where we've asked people for video testimonials, um, but I didn't script out or say specifically. And I would love to do something on just getting clients to share. What do you do with time that you've that you've saved? because you've worked with us because you don't have to write your own blog post. What are you doing with that extra time? Or because you don't, you know, that type of thing. Um, because I think those would be fun little snippets to use, but I think we have to get creative um, we, we to do, do that. We have to help people because people are busy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they're busy. Figure out all of that on their own. That's and you have people that say, Oh yeah, I want to write you a testimonial. And then it never, you know, right. never happens because yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. It's coming. It's coming. Yeah. I'm guilty yeah, yeah. of and that. I Kind of going back to where you started the show and coming full circle is when people, um, you know, if you get bad press and and off, you know, it's fair to say that sometimes it's deserved. And I've had people in the Facebook group ask me, what do you do with with unhappy customers? Uh, and we live in the age of the apology. Apologies right. are everywhere nowadays. People are apologizing. And boy, people will see through you. If that apology doesn't sound sincere or if right. you responsibility, you know, the old because of the lawyer in me, say you're sorry without taking any responsibility for what you've done because you don't want to be, you know what, that doesn't fly anymore. Doesn't fly, no. To take responsibility. I mean, just look at, at Facebook and, and all of the things that went on with them and, um, you know, they how well they say Zuckerberg did in the times when he took responsibility and then there are other places where he testified or whatever whatever that's called where he didn't take responsibility and the media was all over him. Over, so right. I think part of this is, you know, we worry so much about getting bad press. Perhaps the question when, if we do get things like that is the very tough question first and foremost, is there anything I did or our company did or our brand did that could have possibly caused this situation? Right. And, and if you did contribute in any way, take the high road, make sure people understand that you're authentically sorry yeah. that you've learned from the experience and that you will do everything in your power for it not to happen again. And, and you know, a, a year's supply of, was well, that Kentucky Fried Chicken thing we looked at a few years ago, right, where, right. Or a few weeks ago where they ran out of chicken. Right. Uh, right. And, and they turned it around completely. They turned the disadvantage into an advantage with this yeah. entire experience where they gave away a free year's supply of, of, of chicken or whatever. That's the way to do it. If, yeah. if, you, if you played any role at all, take the high road, 
turn it into an experience and make sure oh, everybody's gosh. talking about the apology right as opposed to the situation exactly never delete it take advantage of it turn it around make it positive right and then get all the other positives to push those down absolutely absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. yeah well it, it is that yet again exactly 12 30 here bottom of the hour and I hope everyone has a great weekend. Yes, and, 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 you know, think about how you can be more creative and, and in getting customers to give you the testimonials that you want and more creative about, more innovative about how to turn around the ones that come in that yeah. maybe aren't. And find some innovative ways to use them once you get yes. them. Like I think, again, where there's a lot of things now we could do with them um with testimonials so you, you really we want to start thinking outside the box when it comes to how to use those testimonials as well absolutely so. absolutely well it's been great fun once again Very fun. time to wind down have a great weekend we will see everybody next week um have a great week have a great yeah. weekend and we will see you soon see you soon bye everyone it won't <laughs> Don't you love the awkward smile of Are you are we out now? No, it won't end. And there, there it goes. There we go. It just and I clicked on